Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. So P is a polynomial and we have P of 2x equals P prime of x multiplied by P double prime of x. So in this context, P prime means the first derivative and P double prime means the second derivative of P with respect to x. And P of 2x is obtained by replacing x with 2 of x in P of x. I hope that makes sense. So since P is a polynomial, it's going to be, the solutions are going to be very restricted, so easier to solve. What would happen if they didn't tell us P is a polynomial and P was just a function, right? We would probably use F to represent that. And then a class of polynomials obviously would be a solution, but that would be probably one of the solutions. Would there be non-polynomial solutions to this equation? Something to think about. Anyways. Let's go ahead and see how we can solve these kinds of problems. So in this equation, one of the things that you can definitely do is because P is a polynomial, you can go ahead and write the general form of a polynomial and replace P of X with something like A sub N X to the power N plus A sub N minus one X to the power N minus one all the way down to A sub one X plus A sub zero. In this case, the a sub n, a sub n minus 1, all the a sub i's are real numbers or coefficients and the powers of x's are non-negative integers. Okay? What does that mean? Well, you can basically get p of 2x from here, right? What is p of 2x? Replace x with 2x. And then you're going to get an expression. Great. And then what is p prime? Let's think about it, right? If P is given as follows, then P prime is just going to be the first derivative. So you can go ahead and differentiate this. N times A sub N X to the power N minus 1. And then so on and so forth. And then the second derivative is going to be the derivative of the first derivative, which is going to give you N minus 1 times N times A sub N X to the power N minus 2 and so on and so forth. And then you can kind of multiply these two together and set that product equal to that and good luck with that because that's going to be a lot of work. Obviously, it's going to bring us to the same point, but I just wanted to give you a really nice quick shortcut that you can use with these problems. But before that, let's go ahead and take a look at what Wolfram Alpha has to say about this polynomial equation. Interpreting as follows. Yes, the interpretation is correct, but unfortunately, there are no solutions by Wolfram Alpha. Too bad. It can't interpret it. It says use different phrasing, enter whole words, so, so on and so forth. There are so many other things that use it as an excuse. This still shows that we human beings are smarter than AI. Still. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem as human beings and without getting into that long form. So, actually, that's going to bring us to the same thing like I said earlier, but there's a shortcut, so why not take it? So one of the things that's very important with polynomials, super duper important, is the notion of degree. The degree of a polynomial is basically determined by the highest power of the variable or variables, in which case we add the powers. But in this case, we have a single variable, so it's just the powers of x. And suppose you have something like p of x equals x squared plus 5, the degree of p would be 2 because that is the highest power of x. Make sense? Degree is important because that kind of limits our options. Having said that these uh, p is a polynomial, we already limited our options, but you can do even better than that. So here's the thing. We're going to use the degree to solve this problem. How? Well, suppose the degree of p of x is equal to n, which means the same thing as I said before, when you are able to write p of x la, like this, that means the degree of p is n because that's the highest power based on our assumptions, right? So, but uh, by writing it that way, actually, I'm saving a lot of time and space. So, what is the degree of p of 2x? Well, replacing x with 2 of, uh, replacing x with 2x, notice that it didn't really change anything. It's still x to the power n. There is a 2 to the n, but that's just a constant. It's a coefficient. So the degree of p of 2 of x is still n. Good. What about the degree of p prime? 
Well, the degree of P prime is one less than the degree of P because when you differentiate, you reduce the power. So it's going to be N minus one. What about the degree of P double prime? It is going to be one less than the degree of P prime, which is N minus two. Make sense? What does this all mean though? I got all the degrees, so what? Here's the thing. When you multiply two polynomials, you add their degrees. So in other words, if you have the degree of P of X times Q of X, that is the same thing as degree of P of X plus the degree of Q of X. Kind of like the power rule, or I guess you could use uh, logarithms, sort of, right? Yes, so what does that mean? These two are being multiplied. So the degree of P prime times P double prime is going to be the degree of P prime, which is N minus one, plus the degree of P double prime, which is N minus two, which is going to be two N minus three. Awesome. What about the degree of P of two of X, P of two X, that is N by our assumption, because we said that suppose degree of P of X is N, then automatically we get the same degree for P of two X. So what does that mean? These two are equivalent. These two are equivalent. Therefore, their degrees are equal, right? Obviously, if P of X is equal to Q of X for every X value in the domain, then the degree of P of X is the same as degree of Q of X. So this gives us a really nice equation, which is a super duper improvement. 2N minus 3 equals N. And from here, we quickly get n equals 3, which means the degree of our polynomial is 3. But that means we have a cubic polynomial. Awesome. Let's go ahead and write it as a x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And then from here, we can find a bunch of things like p of 2x. If you replace x with 2x, you're going to get 8x cubed. So it's going to be 8ax cubed. From here, you're going to get 4bx squared and then 2cx or 2 2c or not 2c, hopefully you see what I see. And then p prime is just going to be 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. And p double prime is just going to be 6ax plus 2b. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and multiply these two things and set it equal to that. Cool, right? So let's write it down. 8ax cubed plus 4bx squared plus 2cx plus d is equal to 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c multiplied by 6ax plus 2b. This also explains when you differentiate, you reduce the power. So start with the cubic, then you get a quadratic and a linear. Quadratic times linear gives you a cubic. Make sense? And 3 is the only number that satisfies this relationship. Therefore, let's go ahead and distribute here. We get 6a squared x cubed. And then for x squared, we're going to get x squared from... I think uh, two different places. One of them is this one, 6ab x squared, plus the other x squared is going to come from here, which is 12ab. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that as the coefficient of x squared. So we've taken care of that. Let's go ahead and take care of x. The coefficient of x can only come from x times a constant. So it's going to be 4b squared plus 6ac. That's the coefficient of x. And our constant is going to be 2bc. Now let's go ahead and set that equal to p of 2x, which is this one. And now we're going to get the following. This is going to be 8a. This is going to be 4b. This is going to be 2c. And this is going to be d. Make sense? Let's go ahead and solve this equation. First one, 6a squared equals 8a. Subtract and factor. You get 2a, 3a minus 4. From here, we get two things, a is 0 or a is 4 thirds. Obviously, you don't want a is 0 because that would mean p is not cubic, which is not good. You want p to be cubic. So we're going to discard that and go with a equals 4 thirds. And then if you plug it in here, you're going to get b. Uh, 6 times 4 thirds times b plus 12 times 4 thirds times b equals 4b. Well, this kind of gives us b equals 0 because think about it. Constant times b equals 4b. And obviously, these are different, right? 16 plus 8, 24b equals 4b. And don't do this. Cancel out the 4b's and say 24 equals 4. No, that's not the answer. b equals 0. That's fine. 
because that's not the leading coefficient. If B is zero from here, we get six AC equals two C, but we do know that A is equal to four thirds. So six times four thirds times C is gonna be two C. Again, from here, C is gonna be zero. Nice. And if C is zero, D is also zero, which means, yes, P is cubic, but it's just a cubic with a cubic term. And since it's AX cubed, plus bx squared plus cx plus d, and a, b, c, d, b, c, d are all zero, they're gonna cancel out, and p of x is just gonna be four thirds of x cubed. And definitely you can test it out. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.